Today I'm going to show you something here on this beautiful and big birch tree that I'm blessed to have in my garden. Here we see some sleeves of caterpillars and rather than showing you these pieces I'm going to talk about the method of sleeving because this has become one of my favorite methods to, re to raise caterpillars in captivity. It doesn't require any attention really at all because they're very safe inside this bag um, and you know as long as it doesn't get too hot or too wet for them they'll survive and they'll be protected from predators in the environment and they really are unable to escape. So basically they're rearing themselves for me without me having to put any effort in them. Now what's very important is if you want to sleeve exotic species in your own country then really make sure that they cannot escape from the sleeves because you don't want to introduce new species by accident. So it's a preferred method to use for native species not only because those won't damage your environment if they escape but also because native species are more likely to like your local environment. And now what's in here? I'm not sure if you can see them. They're called the Kentish Glory and Dromis versicolora. But soon I'll make a better video that shows you some of these larvae. Because it's kinda kinda silly to film them through a plastic bag. Maybe with some luck you can see here some caterpillars. Which you probably can't. It's kinda difficult to show this to you. Either way you think you get the point. Just gonna show you some sleeves. What's in here? Oh, it's a very nice piece from, uh, from Taiwan, in fact. It's the Anterea pernie. Anterea pernie. I'll put it in the title. It's a silk moth that's from um, Asia that's commonly bred for silk production. Just like the Anterea yamamai that I'm also rearing. Uh, what's in here? This is Hawthorn. And maybe you can see them. But here's the, the great emperor moth. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a correct common name, but I don't care. Common names are not so important. Uh, either way, the scientific name is Saturnia piri, and when I say that, you should know what it is. Because most of you know already know Saturnia piri. This is not my car. This is not my parents' car either. But we have visitors today. No, I'm not going to film them, those visitors. They're friends of my mom. So what do we have here? Here we have Iribus, which is known as, well, we call in think in English it's called red currant. And if you look in here, you see some hairy black caterpillars. They like to hide. Here we have another one. Okay, this is kind of crummy, crummy quality video, but maybe if I shake them a little bit, they'll drop to the floor. Now, yeah, there they are. Now you can see them. You can see their red feet. And they're doing quite well. They're an endemic tiger moth that only lives on one single island in the entire world. It's the Sicilian tiger moth, the Arctia cornucae. Sicilian tiger moth and these are a relative of the Arctia velica, the cream spot tiger, but they're slightly different. Now in here we have a real common one. Most of you in Europe have seen it once in your life, I think. At least if you live in a forested area. They're really too small to show you, they're small hatchlings, but they are the gypsy moth, the Limantria dispar. And I can see some good sized caterpillar, but you probably can't. Of course they are here on apple tree. So I guess this just saves me a lot of effort because I only have to check these leaves once in a week to see if they're still alive and nothing else. So it's really a great method. I can recommend it. Just make sure you are not sleeving potential invasive species that would be able to do ecological damage to your environment because if you sleeve them, you are slightly more at risk of them escaping. Slightly. So thank you for watching and until next time.